See if we can lock into this now. We sound pretty good. Yeah, I think it sounds great. Nice uh, and crisp. We're both very nasal white guys. Yeah, nightmare. Have you had any uh, busted noses? Not yet. No. Oh, yeah. It is getting hot out there. I don't know if you've noticed in the uh, comedy world, but uh, I uh, bring the violence, as I've always said. Yeah, I, I'm waiting to get hurt, punched. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jason Rouse here, and welcome to another episode of the Safe Word Podcast. Uh, my guest on the show today, Ray Chenevive. Chenevive, baby. Yes. Hello. Uh, What's up? I was checking my records here, and I've noticed um, that... Um, you haven't been on the show in about eight months, and I have a sneaking suspicion a lot has happened in the last eight months. <laughs> because when I'd, uh, I met you, you were frequently uh, yeah. bombing at the buzz mill yeah, with good comedy. Bombing. Bombing. <laughs> I still bomb there. I'm going to yeah. bomb there tomorrow. I've never performed there, and I lived uh, literally a stone so from oh, there man. for about two years. They hate it. I learned how to do comedy at that place. Yeah. It was not... Uh, I mean, if you went up there, they would have imploded, but I mean... <laughs> that that, that, that almost it, happens everywhere. And that's not a... And I'll not say that it, it, I love it, but yeah. any comedian would love it, but yeah, there are a bunch of progressive people. I had to refrain from saying anything too adventurous there. Yeah. But the uh, they had a Friday night open mic. I learned how to do comedy mm -hmm. there. Well, I, I still don't know how to do comedy, but I learned the basics. Yeah, yeah you were... Uh, you know, was that that end like um, uh, what's the Wednesday night show? Did you have some spots? I never did the buzz. They don't they don't put me on the Wednesday night show. No way. Yeah, because it's run by like more progressive people. Oh, at the Buzz Mill. Yeah, I'm thinking at the um, uh, Allen's. Um, what's that fucking bar called? Rocky's Piano Bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just throwing stuff at me. <laughs> Well, let's go back to yeah. eight months ago, and uh, you're, you, you'd you moved to Austin yeah, yeah. from... Uh, it's from New York. From New York. Yeah. Like... Almost three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you moved here maybe about four or five months after I did. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah I moved yeah. here mid-December. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, what was happening in a home before you decided to pack up and, and walk blindly into a snowstorm? Uh, I just failed at uh, <laughs> being a 3D artist. Cool. Uh, still failing mm. today. I uh, didn't get a job immediately. I kind of rationalized. I was like, I'm going to get a... I'll go down to Austin. I'll have like comedy as like a social avenue in yeah. my life, and then I'll continue trying to find work in 3D art. Specifically, I was trying to make like visuals for music and shit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, you know, I just never got into it. I was just more, I just got obsessed with stand-up when I first moved here and, like, acting like a fucking rock star, even though we were all open mic scumbags. Yeah. And, you know? There was enough of you to, to form some sort of kind of tribal hierarchy. We, it was a, yeah, it was a fun summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Lost a lot of things. Uh, how many of those people a couple of years ago are still active in There's, the scene? There's a lot Ten. of them. There, no, no. There's a lot of them. That's uh, it's almost concerning in a way because mm. I'm and I would have to fucking beat all these guys. Yeah, they've did the time. No, they're they're my friends, but like a, a lot of them have stuck. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying this for years. Fuck them. Yeah, 
No, a lot of them are still around. I don't remember the ones that left. I know there are some yeah. that left. No one stopped. ever remembers you quitting. Yeah, yeah. They just, they just like, I think now if one of them stopped coming around, I'd start realizing, yeah. to realize. But then at that point, it was so, I, I, we were meeting like 20 people a day and shit, like fucking crazy. It felt like we were in a, like a... Airport. An airport or like one of those football games where, uh, you know, before the game starts, you shake everyone's hand. It felt like you were there in a locker room or some yeah. shit. You know? When you shake everyone's hand on the open mic circuit, here you end up with pink eye. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. It was dirty, gross. dirty, dirty. A friend of mine referred to you guys as the garbage pail kids. It, it literally is. It, that's 100%. <laughs> and, and you I wouldn't laugh. believe, you wouldn't believe what it looks like now. Yeah. I mean, you go to Kill Tony. Oh. Like you wait in that room. I went, a friend of mine had come in from Sweden, and uh, he said, I'm uh, specifically coming to sign up for the show. Would you come with me? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure. I'll do it. I'll do it once. And I went, and it looked like post-war breadline. You could literally get... Everyone's l- crazy. You could get leprosy from him yeah. sitting in there. Dirty, homeless people, junkies, mental... Ca- I saw a lady laying on the stairs next to her wheelchair with emaciated legs <laughs> and pock marks all over her face. I think I know that lady. Does she dress in, like, entirely in tie-dye? I think so. That's just the craziest shit. Yeah. It really is. It's like, I love Kill Tony. It got me in a stand-up, but the, 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 the fan base, like, those... It's almost like a... Refugee a, camp. A, a, a variety, like, a variety show for, like, schizophrenics. Yeah. It's, like, crazy. And it... I don't know. Price is right. <laughs> Probably a similar lineup. Just everyone seems to be maybe about 20 or 30 years older. Yeah. But uh, it's like anyone with a pulse can show up, which yeah. makes it... Um, crazy as hell yeah no it, the, the 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 audience is crazy just crazy people and like when when i started doing it i felt like there was more class to the people that were signing up like all my friends like we'd sit in vulcan and we sit in the back of the room and there was a cage and everyone didn't and no one smelled <laughs> it was a good time that was a good time that was a good time it we didn't realize time. it yeah no and now it, you have to wait in shakespeare's and yeah. get and get hepatitis probably you know, yeah no the cages were when i first saw them i laughed and i'm like fuck good yeah yeah suffer they through deserve it. it yeah they get it get it yeah and uh now you guys are kind of missing the cages yeah yeah because it was only about 25 people in each cage yeah yeah on either side so yeah. 50 went up to 250 yeah, yeah. contestants it's crazy it's and crazy. at least 200 of those people are out of their minds mm-hmm. have never done stand-up before yeah, yeah. that does that uh, that would irk me. I know when I've seen lineups on comedy shows where I'm like, oh, okay, there's clearly some politics here and some favoritism. Yeah, yeah. But when you see people signing up for the Kill Tony show, do you, uh, like, it must be like the hardcore people that have been consistently showing up, being present, prepared, yeah. and getting bumped by somebody going, I thought I'd try this. Yeah, yeah. This is- well, that's what's going on now, and I think maybe that's the main difference, other than all the ignorant shit I just said about them being all like crazy people now. Mm-hmm. The main difference is that it's all like new comics that are just characters. They're not really comedians. And, uh, and then there's a fucking... And then there's actual comedians like, uh, you know, some of us that are like, you know, that's the main difference. <laughs> Next tracks. Yeah. No, the um, comedy has come, gotten so popular. Yeah. It's it's like when breakdancing became a thing. Everybody was a breakdancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you see this all bottoming out in the... Oh, I don't know. I I don't know if it bottoms out now. I think now it's. I don't. Would we have thought that Kill Tony was going to be in a fucking arena? I I didn't think that was going to ever happen. That's crazy. They've achieved so much. Yeah, you know, it, with with some some momentum, selling ten thousand tickets sounds like a lot, but it's it's not really. It's not that, that hard. hard. Yeah, it's crazy. Now sell ten thousand tickets. Year after year after year after year, yeah. you know, Cat Williams, Russell Peters, mm-hmm. um, that's a different that's a different game. Yeah, I'd imagine that's a different game. I'm performing at the Bass Theater this weekend. Where is that? I think it's like 
four, five, six thousand people. Whoa! For if uh, I'm opening for uh, Steve Trevino. Oh my God! On Friday and Saturday, if Holy you want to come and hang out, God. if you're not working, where? How far is it? It's like ten minutes from here. Holy it's shit! In Austin. Yeah. Holy fuck! Come and watch me scare a bunch of uh, Latino 6, families. Six thousand people. Yeah. In front of six thousand yeah. people. Yeah, I think Holy my record shit. is probably. Somewhere around 10, 10,000, but I wasn't because I had sold those tickets. It was because I was a, a guest on a, a show, per mm -hmm. se, but... Um, That'd be wild to see you perform like a... <laughs> yeah, what I do... <laughs> the Satan of, shit. Yeah, yeah, light up a room. People are going to be whiplash. It's going to be wild. It's going to be highly uh, volatile and... Uh, toxic situation but um yeah it should perfect. be fun yeah that's the thing it's like out. in between gigs here in uh, in the u.s it's like so many highs and lows yeah because when i'm outside of america i'm doing shows three four or five a week until mm. i come home yeah and then uh, i come home and uh podcast with you guys uh and do as many spots as i can on the on the good shows but um yeah yeah we'll see what happens I got some shows coming up this year. I actually leave in a month for Canada. How it's long are you going to be gone? Um, almost two months. Oh, wow. Okay. I'll be home for about 10 days, and then I, I make my way out to um, uh, Denmark for the month of June, and then I'll come back here to do the Canada Day show on July 1st. Canada Day? Holy yeah, the last, uh, the last three years I've been doing uh, an annual Canada Day show here in Austin. Yeah. You guys have 4th of July on yeah, the 4th. Yeah. We have Canada Day on the 1st. Uh, the 1st of July? Yeah. Wow. What, what the fuck happens at Canada Day? Who knows? <laughs> I think it was the... What are you even celebrating? Uh, I think the birth of Canada. Oh, my God. I should know this. I just use that as a benchmark for uh, we're going to do a show with a complete Canadian lineup. Yeah, yeah. So I think usually most of the... Uh, uh, like Los Angeles does an annual Canada Day show at the store, and um, I thought cool. now that I've moved here to Austin, like we had the Danger Cats on the first first year or something like that, mm -hmm. and um, various uh, Canadians. But um, this year, I'm not sure who's going to be on the lineup, who's going to even be in town. But um, yeah, I don't know. It'd be cool if you got the Danger Cats out for the Canada Day thing going on here. Yeah, I think they've already got obligations, but they did Probably. do the last one. I think that was their first trip to Austin, and Canada was under uh, yeah. heavy COVID restrictions and stuff, so they yeah. were coming out of here like they'd just gotten out of the womb. Yeah, yeah. All this. Like, I remember all those guys coming. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> funny. The Canadians, right? <laughs> yeah. I've been running a, a Canadian refugee camp yeah, uh, yeah. off of my couch. No, that's hilarious. In fact, uh, not a Canadian, but the next person to uh, take up residency on my couch is uh, Jake and Louie. Oh, wow. Do you remember Jake and Louie? No. The black head with the racist puppet? <sighs> oh, you're going to see it. I'm going to bring him around town uh, next week. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, the f not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday... Uh, Jake and Louie and I are going to be doing uh, the Filthy Show at the Creek with wow. uh, Adam Lucky and uh, and company. Nice. So Holy that should cow. be fun. He's, this puppet kid is fucking, oh man, it brings a tear to my eye. It's so <laughs> scandalous. Yes. Hilariously ignorant. <laughs> on, the, on the Filthy Show, too. Yeah, no. He, That's great. It's going to be a lot of fun. But um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what this summer has entailed. It's already starting to get the hot. We're sweating in here. Yeah, yeah. And it's, uh, it's been a, a, a relatively mild winter down here. I think it was like ten days of cold. Yeah, in yeah. Austin, man, I I love, I love this part of the earth. <laughs> I, I hate love it here so much. Yeah. I no, no, no. Cold. When everything kind of collapsed, I was living in Los Angeles. Yeah. For like thirteen years. Mm -hmm. And uh, when everything went to shit, this was just before Black Lives Matter kicked off during yeah. COVID, and I was living in one block over from Hollywood Boulevard, so I was in the toilet of the... I remember you telling me about that. And uh, I, I knew I had to go back to Canada and just kind of reset while everything did what it did, but um, I remember a lot of my friends had moved to Las Vegas. Some A lot of people moved home. Mm -hmm. But um, when Red Band had come down here to fill in for Jamie for the Kanye West episode, I talked to him and asked him how it was. And he said, well, I bought a house 
so I'll move here in uh, a matter of months. But I'd never been to Texas before until I moved here, and uh, I love it. I love Austin. Mm-hmm. Austin's yeah. cool as shit, right? I like it. Yeah, yeah. It has its problems, but um, it's what, what's going on here is like the Seattle grunge scene. You know, <laughs> you're getting all these very inflated uh, artists. Yeah, yeah. Doing um, epic shit, but. Yeah. Um, have you signed up for the uh, the Kill Tony show recently? Yeah, I signed up almost every week. They haven't really? had me on in a long time. Yeah, because I remember you were on at Antones, weren't you? I was on in Vulcan. Oh, yeah, I Vulcan. Never got on, I, yeah, it was the first week I uh, the first week at Vulcan was when I started going, and then probably three months later got on the first time. Yeah. And then uh, three months after that, got on the second and third time. Yeah. Oh, I'm you've been just, on three times. Oh, that's cool. I've been on three times, yeah. It's a, it, and isn't it weird that you've seen your progress documented? Yeah, like yeah. The first episode is like, Ugh. I can't even watch it. Ugh. I haven't been able to watch it in years. Yeah. And people think that I, like, want to watch it. <laughs> My no. friends are, like, showing me and shit. Fuck, get away from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, just the sound of your voice. You know what you're doing in that moment in your head. You revisit it, and you're like, that's not what I should have Yeah, done. well, it was just, I was literally, like, such a shell of, like, a... I was so nervous, and I was just not even a person. Dude. I know I when I fucking, met you, you looked like a blade of grass in the wind. I was literally like, yeah, I'd, I'd never, I'd, I've come uh, like so far from yeah. like where that was. I was literally like just a, among other things. I mean, just among comedy and like art, but even like look past that, I was, I hadn't really been like a person yet. A person, yeah. yeah. I wasn't dating anyone. I wasn't. I didn't really have any personality. Introverted, you know, and awkward, heavily introverted. I learned all that shit here, pretty much. Yeah, how did? And I feel like I was maybe a late bloomer a little bit about that, but other than that, I don't know. It's, it's working great. fine. Like I've seen you perform a half a dozen times over the last year or so, and yeah. uh, your progress is. Uh, well, you clearly been at it, working hard. Yeah, yeah. Doing it, and now you're uh, the sound guy at the Sunset. Yeah, yeah. The great. What a fucking. Le- what a. Now that's the real progress. Yeah. <laughs> that we're talking about. No, just- you're a technical guy, <laughs> making sure everyone else's laughs sound great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's such an easy job. It doesn't really. I'm just there just to hang. Pretty yeah. much. I just turn on the fucking microphone. Mm-hmm. That's it. And then I just like make sure nothing goes wrong. Have you taken some of these uh, skills that you've learned here back home to, to perform? And, oh, yeah. I visited New York a couple times. Nothing's really uh, changed. I've just done mostly open mics and stuff. Yeah. But I, I had never done open mics while I was living in New York. I was I only came, I only only went to one just to see how it w- went uh-huh. before I'd done comedy. Just I just wanted to see what an open mic was like. And then I just didn't perform. Uh, but... You know, were you what? not performing music live at all? No, I never no. did that. Huh. No, I was. I, I'm literally just barely a musician. I yeah, I, just, I know. I remember seeing all your social media. I told you get rid of all the guitar shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're a comic now. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to see you tune up the acoustic. Well, I was. I was. I doing that at that point. Was I doing that on? Instagram? That's embarrassing as fuck if I was. I don't remember. Yeah. Cringe. It was, uh, I was like, listen, you're, you're great. You're going to be fine. Uh, but you got to whitewash uh, your past. Yeah, There's yeah. no hobbies anymore. You are a professional comedian. Yeah, yeah. And you must establish yourself and just work from that line down. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, having that conversation with you. Ugh. It's because I had a bunch of 3D art on my profile. That's right. Yeah, I was, and it was still nothing funny about it. Nothing funny. It, and in fact, it was funny at how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was what was funny about it. Yeah, it was like it looked like a um, uh, like watercolor swirls and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And then a couple of like pictures of your guitar or something. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd imagine. Four pictures. Yeah, I was. It was a rough time. <laughs> I hadn't figured it out yet. No, you say hey, it's a, it's always been a, a work in progress. And do uh, you got any plans to record an album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still play music every day. I'm just it's like a private thing. No, I, I mean a comedy album. Uh, I mean that's years and years down the line. Ten years down the line, good probably. for you because you know I'm not play games like that. There's about a half a dozen people that recorded specials after doing comedy for a year yeah yeah it's well wild we talked about that 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 was that i was saying that i wanted to record an album with you <laughs> remember the top floor of some nightmare open mic 
Nightmare Remember we were going to oh, the Hilton, like oh. the hotel? Yes. We just talked about this, and I said to you that I wanted to record an album. And I, I was, laughed? Yeah, yeah. It was like a year and a half, in, less yeah. than that, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think at the time I wanted it to make like uh, be like kind of like a mockumentary or whatever the fuck, but mm-hmm. there was some part of me that wasn't joking about it. Yeah. You know? I really wanted like an album very early, but no. Nah. I know. I know the motions of this now. It's not a... I'm not going to yeah. be silly here. Y- you've seen some great comedians since you've been here. Mm-hmm. Do you have any top favorite shows? Um, Who are your guys now? Because you're f- the comics that you liked two years ago are probably a lot different than the guys... You- I thought you were going to pull out a picture of Dane Cook. Life by focus going on. I'd say my favorite comic is now Brian Holtzman. Fucking I think that's right. my favorite nice. comic. Good choice. Brian Holtzman. As to William Montgomery, still one of my favorites. Mm. Uh, let's see. Casey Rocket, obviously. He's been very supportive. And one of my favorite comics as well. Yeah, you must have watched Brian at least 100 times. Yeah, and... Uh, Yes, I've I've watched you at the back of the probably room. twenty five thirty times. Do you, you have know? to turn down his mic at all? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. He lights it up. Yeah, well, that's what it was. Some, uh, lately, I'm not even the sound guy at those days. I, mm-hmm. I I just work the door on Thursdays, and and my my sound guy he doesn't turn down Brian because he Brian is so like dynamic with like yeah. where his voice goes, and he's doing it on purpose. But my sound guy doesn't realize that, so he he's just going leaves opposite. him. He just uh, leaves him at the same level. Uh, that's too high because w- Brian gets really quiet sometimes, yeah. and so he'll put him up, and then and then it's like violently loud, like like to the point where it's like <laughs> like it's gonna hurt someone. And I I told him I'm like you gotta just leave it at a low level. He's getting quiet like that to yeah. like he, it's he's doing it on purpose to like to get the audience to pay attention or like to scare them yes. when he does get loud. Yeah, he it's a theatrical realize that. performance. Just like leave the fucking levels. He knows mm-hmm. how loud he is. He yeah. can tell. He's gonna make the adjustments. Yeah. Accordingly, some people don't know the the little things, and he and he doesn't change that. So like, it would just get like it would literally just be just the some of the loudest thing under I've ever those seen. Speakers, yeah, and you see them, they get blasted. Oh man, I was I was like one of those guys. I'm, I'm like working there, sitting next to the speakers, ears feeling ringing. bad for the audience. That's not how it should be. <laughs> the fuck is going on? Uh, I've never really seen anybody. Too upset at any of the shows. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen any? Oh uh, no, I've watched people walk out and say that there's yeah with Brian too. Oh That's, yeah. If you give them 20 minutes of Brian Holtzman, eventually the white women just start getting up. They'll find a way. They'll go to the bathroom. They'll they'll yell something from the side of the stage. Yeah. And at, at Brian, <laughs> they'll start doing something. If they don't leave the show, they'll start letting it be known. They, they didn't like the yeah. part where he talks about raping them in the gym. I didn't like that. Job. <laughs> Shut up, that's <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah. I've had I've had such religious experiences watching Brian Holtzman. Oh, it's my wild. I, I, <laughs> my mom just watched Brian Holtzman. She visited a couple weeks ago. She oh. said she hated him. To wow. Death. Yeah. Can she you believe that? probably reminds her of your stepfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> well, that's what's funny is that Brian Holtzman kind of looks like he would be my dad a little bit. Or he looks like my dad. He's like this gray. Yeah. Yeah. You come home crying from school. Okay. He goes to the school and beats up all the kids that have been fucking with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Can you imagine Brian Holtzman showing up at your school as your dad? Yeah, yeah. Screaming in the hallway. He, he's yeah. He, I wish he was like a. You wish Brian Holtzman was your dad? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, he, yeah. He's just my fucking hero. So yeah, I just like him. Watching. Like a lot of us. A yeah. lot of us. He's he's definitely in my top ten. Yeah, he's my favorite comedian ever. He's just all, he's all, he doesn't even have, like, and I mean this in a nice way, he doesn't even have, like, jokes as much as he has just raw improv, improv ability and uh, just the just the best stage presence I've, I've ever seen. Oh, the outfit, the mustache, the whole deal. Yeah. But that's from playing the last spot at the comedy store for years. He came yeah. into L.A. in the 80s, mm-hmm. I think in the mid-80s. And, uh, uh, you know, the Laugh Factory used to use me and Brian to get everyone out of the club at the end of the night. They'd, wow. They put us on back to back. That's fucking incredible. And it was... Were uh, you first and then he was after? So you were bringing... Yeah. Him yeah. 
That's multiple I nights. I would have just. I, I'd pay. I'd pay thousands of dollars to live a night like that just to see you guys in the audience. Light people up. Have you been to L.A.? I've been a couple times, but never like that. No. Yeah. I don't understand the 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 ephemeral feeling that that must have been. Like the the, the there's eight people in the audience, and it's like two a.m. in and L.A. The room holds four hundred, and, and the, there's eight people. And there. There's eight people. I would I I would kill to see that. Just I, you yeah. or Brian Holtzman. That would be incredible. Well, I I'm sure at some point we'll uh, we'll cross paths in Los Angeles, and mm-hmm. I'll give you the fifty cent tour. I can't wait. I'll show you all the fucked up shit there's all kinds of other things going on just outside of the not just the comedy clubs but independent rooms at various dungeon type places and whatnot but um what's the plan for this year are you going to uh try and get some spots on the road or uh i mean i'd love to if people fucking gave me spots on the road i don't i don't really know how to start doing this shit i don't know how to who to hit up i'd that's the next my main goal is right yeah you're not an asker yeah, I don't ask. Neither is Brian, neither to myself. The the thing is, is just to be fucking a badass. Excellent. Yeah. You have to be excellent, and then they'll come to you. And then and then when they do come to you, it's there's a different energy than when you. I mean, this is my way of rationalizing no, not asking for things, yeah, which is probably yeah. I probably should be I should be asking. I'm not saying I think you should ask. Sometimes. But you know, that there's such an influx of people exactly in the same position who've asked ten times out of pocket. Yeah, multiple times. So now, when you go up to somebody that would might compliment and vice versa, they're already like, "Get lost." Yeah, yeah. Because I've had fifteen losers come up here, and now yeah. you're grouped in with them. Yeah, yeah. Losers. It's hard to it's hard to ask in this scenario. Yeah, I don't want to be one of those guys. I think also it puts you at this like position of like you owe them something, and i i don't have I don't have the abilities to pay anybody pay back. It back. Yeah, I don't have a show. I don't have fucking. So I I just there's that's one of my issues, but I'd l- still like to ask. You know, I'll sometimes ask. Like, yeah, I'll ask to get on open mics all the time. I'll just walk in there. I'd say September next year, start asking. <laughs> that's probably a good idea. You yeah. know what I mean? You got a f- three four years under your yeah. belt. You can string it. You can show up on time and deliver. Yeah, yeah. Really? I feel like I could do that now. I'm just too. I, it's flooded. It's it is flooded. What I don't know when that's going to balance itself out. You know, I I was always waiting for like if I, the I was always. Lately, I find myself waiting for like the validation of the mothership or something like that to do something like that. But you know that might never happen. So who knows? I just have to make it no, for myself. No, don't wait for other people to validate you when you're doing good shit. Yeah, the audience will respond to it. Yeah, you know. But there's such a trend in comedy right now that it's, you know, there's a about ten famous comedians in can in uh, the United States. Mm-hmm. And um, there's no real middle class to that. It's either, you know, low rent club acts mm-hmm. or uh, theater uh, yeah. comics. I'd love to be just a low rent club act. I just want to see the country and do all that shit. Yeah. I want to get that moving. But I don't know where that starts. I don't have like a normal comedy like a uh, come up. Like I, I, there's a lot of stuff about the real nuance of like the business that is stand up that I don't understand like fucking all that shit like traveling working oh. in clubs around the country I don't understand that yet I came up watching Kill Tony that's what got me to stand up yeah it's honestly strictly the art that interest interested me at any point you know not the business obviously most people are probably not interested in the business but I, I I'm just saying I have no concept of it you know so I don't even know where to start. You just hit up bookers and other yeah. fucking states. Is that what? So you just yeah. have to. I guess you just have to get there in the first place. Yeah, you impress them. Create a resume, and uh, but again, you can eclipse all of this. You get a six-second video that does a hundred million views, and next yeah. thing you know, you're a headlining comic. That's crazy. You know, uh, that's the new game now. You don't have to go through. Look at Aaron Belial. Yeah, he's yeah. been doing comedy for less than a year. He was on a finalist on America's Talent, and he's headlining clubs across America. Is he headlining now? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Good for him. <laughs> Let's go. And he can't talk. Yeah. 
So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, what's your excuse? And I'm yeah. saying that yeah, what's blanket. Anyone's yeah, excuse? it's like, and that's what I wanted to show everybody down here. I go, I'll bring a retarded guy and a mute guy, and they'll fucking blow all you guys away because they're Canadians. <laughs> it's in our blood. We are the funnier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> We are better. We don't have any military, but we do have uh, pound for pound. Funny people. I'll put my 10 against anybody else's 10 any day. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. You saw what Sam Walker did to this town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, back. Yeah, yeah wait, wait, so they're coming back in three weeks? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I'll pair you guys up. You guys should. I, we've talked a lot. He was actually there for my first, like, I was two Sam or there. Hack? Both. Uh, they were there for my first like two, two week, two weeks doing comedy. I just went up to them and said I liked their appearances on the show. Or it was just weird for me to see them in real life because I remember seeing them. Yeah. Uh, on, nice guys. Yeah, and they're nice guys, and they were nice to me then. And then, and then they. I remember Sam watching me, and I was less than a month then, and he just watched me bomb or whatever. And I thought I was something even then, just how delusional I was. I thought I was like you were funny. in a sea of mediocrity. Yeah, and you you couldn't yeah. see over the horizon from that pool. I I just remember him watching my my set, and then uh, and probably being disappointed. And then I uh, when I talked to them recently, probably like less than six months ago, when they were last yeah. year, uh, they told me that they remembered seeing me on Kiltoni shortly after mm -hmm. that happened. So. That, and that was a wild experience because they it seemed like they uh, just remember remembered me and stuff oh, for when for they sure. did come back and it was a crazy moment and now we're friendly so yeah I know wow. they're they're good guys they're uh, they're they're doing it they're have you seen the trouble they're in in Canada what is going why is that what's happening I saw a little bit about that did they say Communists. something they said it, their presence is annoying to the government there there was a, a the one of the prime minister of Alberta. Uh, mentioned them in a, new, a news conference to cool it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alberta has a prime minister? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the f How does it work yeah. over there? There's uh, a king prime minister? Isn't the fucking uh, big president guy? Isn't he a prime minister? We don't have a, pri a president. We have a prime minister, and he's a total fucking So he's the, the, the Justin Trudeau. He's the mega prime minister. And he's then there's the, an Alberta prime minister? Each province has a... Uh, Sub prime minister. Yeah, I don't think it's called a prime minister. What's the fucking idiot <laughs> called? <laughs> you're literally... The like, prime minister... I'm very detached. You're so removed from... I'm so... Canada, right. I, I couldn't get out of Canada quick enough. Like, uh, within... Two years, I was looking to build bridges out of town because all my heroes have, didn't live in the country. Yeah. Anybody had made anything outside of Canada had moved. Yeah. But it's a great college. Canada's the best comedy college in the world. Mm, yeah. You, you know. So. Then you've got Ivy League universities, which are London, England, and New York City. Yeah. There's a, Oxford and your whatever. Yeah. And then uh, you graduate and to conquer LA the world. Or Austin. Yeah. LA or Austin? Yeah. Now, Austin, right? But LA is also, if you're into film and television, that would be more of a place to yeah. reside. But I'll, strictly live entertainment, I think that's it's going to be Austin, but I don't know yet. You know, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, uh, it's like, what is it, like 70% music, 40% comedy in this town? No, no, it's it's less music than that, dude. You yeah, know, right? I've seen fucking live music here. I, I know one bar, and it's next to the sunset that does live music. Yeah. Everything else, it's just fucking Moombaton. What the fuck? What's Moombaton? It's the fucking music. They the boom, ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum, like the, the Latino music that they, oh, they yeah, play yeah. at the bars. I'm just saying, I, I don't see a lot of live music anymore. I've been here three years. I, I, I've, I haven't seen a lot of live music. Yeah. It's usually some guitar player in a bar band. Yes, and a bad, yeah. uh, like a bad... The real live music capital of the world is Nashville. I've heard. But it's country music, so no one wants to consider it the live music and people yeah. say, hey, country music. But that's the reality, is that it's the live music capital of the world. I remember visiting Broadway on Nashville, and that, that shit was fucking wild. But... I don't know. Maybe it used to be the live music capital of the world. I think Austin used to be some sort of... Probably I'll tell you one 80s. thing. The infrastructure of whatever this used to be, Austin, it's helped a lot. Because there's stages in almost every fucking... 
every place bar, here. coffee shop. That's one yeah. thing I noticed. I'm like, stage, stage. Because every as a comic, you're like, can I perform in this building? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a stage here because they've been running acoustic sets yeah, during yeah. lunch. And so, it's all set up easy for comedy. So maybe it was, at one point, a live music yeah. place. But and And maybe I'm not doing enough research and figuring it out. Yeah, what is the best place to go see live? Anybody music? who's watching right now, uh, we're both we're talking both retarded, completely out of our asses, <laughs> and uh, we should be at home with our families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we don't, uh, we don't have, have any families. Not no. anymore. We came here, <laughs> raised to the, <laughs> to the live music capital of the world, Street Ghetto, dude. You yeah, must no. have seen like. It must be dangerous for you to leave work every night. Yeah, no, I watched someone <laughs> die a couple of months ago. Oh, shit. Yeah, I watched shot? someone get shot to death outside. No! Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that on news. It was directly I, out front. I, directly in front of this. I watched it happen. I watched the whole thing. Do you want to break this down? I just heard... I was I was sitting in a way that I could look out the window if I just went like this. Behind the sound booth. In my, I was, the, those bay windows. I, I was... The sound booth is, you know... Obviously facing the stage, just, you know. At the very back of the room. Very back of the room. I was sitting in a way that I could just move my head to the right a little bit and look out the window. At second story. Second story. And I heard gunshots. And then I looked, and I, w I watched the cops shoot this guy like 25 times. Oh, the times. cops shot him. The cops shot him 20 times. And I watched it. And there was, there was like th three women that fucking died. <laughs> or not three. Uh... Three women there's, died. There was only one guy that died, but there's two people that got shot. No like, shit. Like, real bad. Yeah, what was other this, than uh, the guy that died. Were they pursuing this guy into the streets? and then No, he, he, he was apparently trying to bring a gun into the bar, oh. and, and they just fucking gunned him down. They lit him up. Because he was about to pull some fucking cowboy shit, yep. and then he shot a woman accidentally in the head, I think. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it was it was crazy, and I we we thought that she died too. Like if this happened in Canada, they would shut down the country. Probably. Yeah, we don't have shootouts in the street. We have hockey games, mm -hmm. street hockey. <laughs> but the Canadian <laughs> government has banned handguns. Yeah, yeah. My dad talks about shit like that all the time. He fucking he's yeah. like those fucking liberals, Canucks. Yeah. No, I'm uh, I'm <laughs> buying a gun uh, probably this year. <laughs> Yeah. I think I'll get my American citizenship and my gut license all in the same day. Yeah, yeah. That's about as American as you can get. Yeah. Wow, you're going to become a full-on American citizen soon. If the Canadian government keeps acting up the way it is. Only 20 years in the making it took to get full-on citizenship? For no, you? Only t after four. Oh, four. I could have applied uh, 10 years ago. And you just didn't because no. you had everything you needed? No, I was like, I was hanging on Canadian health care. Mm. And I didn't really want oh, to give that genius. up. Oh, that's genius. Yeah, so I stretched that out as long as I could while I was Before in Canada was like, nah. Yeah, they cut me off. When? Recently? Uh, about a decade ago. Oh, okay. But I can reapply and reintroduce myself into the system if I decide to take residency up again. So I'll have an American passport and a Canadian one for whatever. It's crazy. Mm. That's a, that's a, that's the system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lucky for you, you were born into this, so you yeah, can yeah. only fail upwards. Uh huh. Yeah, hundred percent. I wish I. I'm about to turn twenty six. Uh, I'm about to lose my health care here pretty soon. Why is that? Nervous about that. Well, I'm oh. still my parents. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you lose it after your birthday. That's 26. a twenty six. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to have to start paying for it myself. Fuck. What is that a month? A couple hundred bucks a month? Yeah, probably $400 a month minimum. Fuckers. Yeah, yeah they're going to fuck me a little bit. <sighs> I'm going to be... want to stay taking some yoga classes yeah. and get your body up to standard because uh, a, a simple trip to the doctors here, a friend of mine had broken her femur in a skydiving accident and she'd been nice. paying that off for fucking 10 years. Jesus. Like $40,000. Mm -hmm. To get that. What? Yeah. That's why you don't skydive. Don't skydive. When you're an open mic comedian. No, I don't even bungee cord. <laughs> Are you a risk taker? No. Did you jump kids on your bike when you were a kid? Nope. I didn't do anything <laughs> like that. Nope. I was a pussy. And it, I wish I was a risk no taker. No abuse of older sisters? No. 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 Didn't do anything like that. Just fucking... Older brother? I had a younger brother. Yeah, that's where it's... Yeah. I was supposed to be the one making... The moves. Risks, and I yeah. didn't. Was your brother 17? 
He's uh, 23, turning 24 in May. He's right behind you. Your right mother you. didn't even let the stitches heal. No, no. She just fucking shot us out. <sighs> one and two. Like, yeah. Back and here to we back. Are. And he uh, has a life and is about to make a salary. <laughs> and here I am. I'm just a retard. Sitting in an old man's apartment. Sitting, talking. <laughs> in front of skulls. Just fucking, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> he has a salary. I know. It's going to be great. Like I said... And he he respects me for some reason. I think because Matt, you're living your dream brain blows my mind. Yeah. Well, yeah. he knows that you. He probably believes in you and sees the potential in you. Yeah, I think he does, which is nice. Yeah, because, it's nice. Uh, that's yeah. I Someone to, has to. I had to hide my beginning of my career from my family because I didn't want to uh, have any negative derailments. They were. They, no one in my family was in show business. Yeah, yeah. So when you start going, I'm going to do open mics for free for five years. And they're like, how are you going to make a living? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's why I worked so aggressively to get up to that hour special within it. You know, five that, years. Yeah. F- June. That's incredible. Seven, eight, eight, nine, four years. That's incredible. Four years from open mics, but I was doing on average forty spots a week in open mics. Open mics. I take the bus in an hour from my hometown into Toronto because I knew I could do two or three more uh, spots than I could do at home. I was burning up the amateur nights where I'd close it and do it but there was no there was no other rooms in the city so uh toronto was the closest how thing. many spots do you think you'd get a night a like, night yeah uh, in toronto i'll tell you so sundays i would go down to this terrible open mic which is uh in toronto on a sunday it was called einstein's in the college area and then mondays would be amateur night and then tuesdays i would do three spots so i would do two open mics and then i'd find out where local bands would play and say in between set changes can i go up and do 10 minutes wow and uh it got to a point where they were actually uh people were thought i was on the lineup when i come to the show that's cool as fuck so i learned uh all those music stuff i came up through the music audiences for opening for bands and stuff like that that's so. a that's a great idea and then when i'd moved to england i performed in all these i hosted the metal hammer awards one year which was crazy it was like the oscars for people who don't shower <laughs> it was uh, cool but yeah <clears throat> music's always been a, a big part of my uh my comedy yeah. i've always enjoyed uh making the drummer laugh the the drummer would be the guy that would laugh at your comedy i think if like Timing. there was anyone timing they always <laughs> love it the drummers always love the timing of yeah it. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I want to make music more part of my uh, fucking stand-up thing. Did you see uh, Tom Green? Out. He did a couple songs at the end of his show at the Mother Show. Really? Yeah, it was great. Oh, my God. He's very, he, he's evolved. Because he started as a, uh, him and his friends who developed the, in, invented the Tom Green show, would go down and they'd watch Norm MacDonald and Harlan Williams at the Ottawa Yuck Yucks which is a comedy club in the nation's capital. And then um, they decided to do their own skits and stuff. But uh, Tom has revisited stand-up over a decade ago. And um, watching his set oh, last weekend, it was awesome. Is it, so is Harlan Williams from Canada? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Jim Carrey. John You're right Kennedy. about the fucking caliber over there. It's crazy. I know. And look at Harlan. Who who can you compare Harlan Williams to? No one. Nobody. Yeah. Zero. Physical, yeah. his comic choices, all of it. All of them are different. We're all super different. Canada, Canadian comics set trends. Americans follow them. Mm-hmm. 
Interesting. This That's is crazy. very anti-American. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of America, though. Thank you, America. Thank you, America. I don't want to curse anything. No, I, here. I moved here completely because of the freedom of speech, because my fellow Canadians and comedians are going through a real rough time with the Canadian government, which you it's you crazy. would think was crazy. You know, if, if yeah. the Canadian government, if the American government decided to go after somebody like... I'd say a bad idea, Ari Shafir. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't go very well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably not. You know, yeah. I don't know. I'd like to see Ari perform in Canada. I wonder if he'd pull any punches or anything, do anything differently. I'm going to give you something, but can I ask you not to give it to anyone else? Sure. It's called chlamydia. Okay. <laughs> Um, You're going to pull up that image of that woman eating shit? <laughs> no, Did that's not. send me? That's my son. Five or six. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me see if I still have this on my phone. Now, uh, where is it? Where is it? Fucker. I think I might have deleted it, but I can send it to you later. Yeah, please do. Uh, about 13 years ago. Uh-huh. Um, Ari Shafir, Sam Tripoli, myself, Chris Neff, our driver and a cameraman went on tour for a month and we made a movie about it that was never released. So I have a rough Dude, cut of it on my phone. I would love to have that. For okay. Sure. Please do. And I have a friend uh, who's obsessed with films about entertainment and stuff. Uh-huh. And I, he'd love to see that too. Perfect. Maybe you really need to yeah send that please. I will uh fuck let me find that thing. I'm gonna do that while we're right here. Video, video. What do we got? How long was it? It's an hour and a half. Holy fuck, dude! There's a hard drive with um 120 hours. Where of, were you touring? Uh, from L.A. all the way up to Vancouver, and then um, we finished in um. My hometown went from Hollywood to uh, Canada, dude. I want, I, yeah. I, I we really would appreciate your insight on like how to fucking start doing stuff like that because it's not like you're touring necessarily, but the way that you made you know spots happen around the country and probably kind of broke even. That's amazing to me. Yeah, and you you good for. I really appreciate your wonderlust. It's yeah. one thing we've always talked about. Anytime I talked about travel and comedy, you were yeah. all ears. And yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I think that's great. And at some point, in, in possibly by the end of the year, I'm going to call you and go, hey, do you want to break even in yeah. Europe? Oh, man, that'd be great. Here's I, your ticket. Yeah. This is where you show up. I'll see you in a, a 20 hours. I'll, I'll, I'd, I'd yeah. do that. I would do that to tomorrow. Yeah. I would do that. No, I that's know. That's how much that... I think it's an essential part of comedy. I I can write more, literally fucking off in Europe than I can here. You trying your book, everything's fucking. Everything is like, just interesting. How do you say that? What is, is that? What a girl? Okay, the food is. <laughs> it's like it's all. Oh, I love it. Literally, I, I, I did my best writing day of all time, and I was traveling from fucking uh, on a train. East, yes, on a train. Lovely. Eight hours to sit. I just wrote the whole time. And the fucking. It just goes by, and you're like, what the fuck? I, I, they had a flight book for me to fly from Oslo to Bergen. Yeah. And uh, I looked, I go, but there's a train ride. And they go, yeah, but it's six and a half hours. But it's through the woods. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that one. Was it less expensive or more expensive? It was a little more expensive, but I would... I, yeah, yeah. And they're only 20-minute sets. So, so it's Visa. It's a Visa that allows you to make money in foreign places? Yeah, and then you can apply for citizenship. It, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's your bloodline that's attached to Scotland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. That's, that sounds great. I'm stoked I'm to see you uh, in the that. fall in Europe. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to do you're that. You're gonna love it. You're gonna have a great time. Thanks for being on the show, Ray. And uh, <laughs> Thank you, we will uh, we'll we'll do a follow up. I think we should do this again around Christmas and see what happens after after your like. If yeah, we go. yeah. Where you don't even look me in the eye anymore. I, go, I didn't want to be around you. I met a bunch of unpleasant people. No, no. We would have a great time. Hundred percent. We'd have a fucking great time. You would absorb all of it. Yeah, and yeah. You come back with your own list of rules. But a uh, uh, reading recommendation for you would be yeah. a book called "Get in the Van." Get in the van. It's uh, it's written by Henry Rollins. It's yeah. his diaries of the early years of the band Black Flag. Mm-hmm. So it, it gives you a very good idea of how to really just go on the road and, and do shows. What was it called? Get in the van. Get in the van. Okay. Henry Rollins. Interesting. 
Yeah. That book and another book called Be Your Own Booking Agent. Those are the only two books you need. Mm -hmm. Your balls, your brain, uh, uh, a little bit of a, a Bible to work from as far as how hard and how difficult it can be on the road, mm -hmm. and then how to get on the road with the booking book. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, everybody. A lot to learn. Uh, check you. me out in Vancouver, uh, April, Edmonton, Calgary, Thunder Bay, uh, Hamilton, Toronto, and then, um, yeah, there's going to be a huge uh, European tour in, in the uh, October of this year, which will include, um, I think I'm going to do a country a week. I think I'm going to do a country a week. I think that'd be the best bet. But thanks for watching, everybody. All uh, right. Ooh. Wow, that was great. Yeah, man. I learned so much. I can't wait to be a fucking a, a Scottish citizen. <laughs> oh my god, this is a bad time to tell you I have diarrhea, isn't it? This is this is uh, wow. this is horrible. So is this an this audience so just for you, or was this this uh, is part of a it's, it's, is it cold a, in here? A, a X-rated comedy show. So I showed him what was up. What I'm trying to say is I'm looking for a place to stay. Yeah. Right? I need a place to stay tonight. <laughs> do you think you could do that in this country? No. No. If I'd feel so free if I could do that. I can't wait to the point where I'm I can take my cock out during a show. And it's a not big get day. scared. And not that's get the thing. Nervous. I was totally covered up. Yeah, psychologically, physically, all of it. I had a, I was a shy, yeah, yeah, person, and then there was got to a point where I said fuck this, and I started to go. What's the most embarrassing thing next to public speaking? Public nudity, man. Naked yeah. public speaking. Yeah, yeah. So now I, I I'm there's nothing. You take the power from like. Yes. You take your cock out and and, and and just imagine a scenario they're like, you have a small penis. Like a crowd of people say you have a small yep. penis and you don't care if they said something like that. I you was literally staring at my cock going, you knew we were on tonight. <laughs> 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 I was so bad. I was like, this is not going to bring in any sexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's completely a unsexual. <laughs> it's, it's borderline disgusting. <laughs> It's not good. I was yeah. so white and blown out, and the cock wasn't up to stand. It was just yeah, but you. It could, was a great day for laughs. But you could go out there, and and not fucking freak the fuck out. That's, that's why I cried in the audience because the beginning I had I'll just go up to the front of the stage do ah, but then I saw I'm like, let's cross the line. <laughs> I'm going to invade their space, yeah, and yeah. as soon as I started stepping in the crowd, people couldn't get out. Yeah, so yeah. they're locked into their chairs, and the people in the back, a lady hid. Because I had been going out for nervous cigarettes out on the, on the street before, while the show was running. And I made friends with the, the doorman. Because man. of what? Because you knew this was about to happen? Uh, just generally. I, I can't sit still. I, my head's full of squirrels. What am I going to do? Uh, okay. Can I, if it doesn't go well, can I still do this thing? I didn't know what the variables were going to be. I, the wind could change direction. It's because you knew you were going to take your cock out. That's why. No, it had nothing to do with the caulk. It, it was, was, I didn't want the entire set to hang off of the back of what I'd done in the end. I okay. wanted a straight up, dirty, solid stand up routine. Yeah. And then throw them, like when they think they can't take anymore, I'm going to force myself on them. Yeah, yeah. Naked. Yeah. And it was great. That's how you do it. And that's why I enjoy going to uh, European countries because you can get your cock out. <laughs> And they always expect it from Canadians. They're like, you Canadians are always getting your dicks out. It's like, because uh, we, it's, you know, it's how we stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, so get your Scottish uh, birth, uh, long version birth certificates. But sorry, uh, your grandmother's Scottish. What's grandpa? Grandpa's French. One of my French. Friends, yeah, but I'm mostly a Slav. I'm, I, my mom's side is... I'm I'm more Slavic than yeah. anything. I'm a Czech, Czech. Oh, you can see it in your yeah, uh, my your dead features. eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking death, uh, genocide. You can see genocide in my face. <laughs> Witnessing fucking just uh, and, uh, another cold winter. Uh, there's gigs in Estonia. You can go to. Really? Tallinn has the shows. Most you can go anywhere now. Is English Comet the only place that's. Uh, you know, uh, 
Russia wasn't so big on the laughs. I no. bombed on a television show there in Moscow. I, I bombed my ass off most of the time <laughs> I was in Europe. I bombed my ass. Yeah. Off. I went to Paris. I, I didn't think I was going to fucking do great, but yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. You had bad shows in Paris? Yeah, yeah. I fucking bombed my ass off in Paris. <laughs> fucking, they hate me. In, the, in, the, in Paris? Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the, and I don't want to say the hackiest guys, because they're comedians, and they were making an audience laugh, but that's what was really doing great, was like really like very obvious humor, very shallow humor. Your country has misrepresented you, because as an American act going over into that kind of comedy scene, you're looked at as like, oh, this guy already thinks he's better than us. Yeah, yeah. So And you have none of that. You're not better than them. You're just yeah, here's different leg in it. Yeah. Just a little different, and but uh, maybe that's what the comics thought on the show. But yeah. I, I think the audience was truly just not there. They're, they they weren't developed enough of a palate. It's just retarded for me to be like they didn't have the palate to enjoy yeah. my comedy. Yeah, because that's not what it is. If I was a good enough comic, I could just go up there and 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 say whatever needed I needed to to make them laugh. Mm-hmm. And I and I'm not good enough to be that comic yet. But I can say that like. If you're a little weird or alternative at all, if you're doing anything really different, you'd probably struggle in in, in uh, Paris. But, I mean, I went to Berlin after that. Berlin, I bombed there, too, also. But I did have a couple fun yeah. sets there. And, uh, yeah. But you know that you can go back there and redeem yourself. I, I want to go back there and redeem yeah. myself immediately. I, I wanted to try and make Europe like a every six-month thing, but that's just simply not going to happen if I that's don't. That's grand. Yeah, I'm not going to. Do that. Hotel, flight, yeah. food, it's five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars. Yeah, it's like ten grand to go over for the month if you're not bringing income. But I have shows in Europe in October. In fact, I plan on driving from uh, Copenhagen up to Berlin and uh, Poland. Poland. I, I wish I could come with you on that. Well, let's October. let's let's put a little feather in that and say Please. that um, around. Uh, that would that would be a dream, dude. So by late August, let's visit this again. Okay. And I bet you you're gonna have some traction on your Scottish passport, and you'll be able to um, uh, come and do some shows with me in uh, in Europe in the fall. So so what comes from like having the Scottish passport? N- not only so would that help in other parts of Europe too? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Now I know there's been an uh, EU adjustment or something. Yeah, so yeah. I don't. Uh, I'm not sure how the the branches have come off of that, uh, but you literally, there's nothing wrong with being living in Iceland for a couple months out of a year yeah, with yeah. your wife. Yeah, of course. I, I would love your to do shit like that. beautiful Icelandic stuff. wife. <laughs> She's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, probably. Perfect skin. Yeah. In fact, you had all the mirrors removed from the house because you don't want her to see to see your reflection yeah, next yeah. to hers. Yeah, yeah. So you just, shh, shh, <laughs> pretty, pretty. Shh, yeah. Nice and blue eyes. You'll definitely meet a girl in Europe that you'll go and be Dude, with. I was just there for fucking two weeks, and I, I slept with one woman in Berlin, and it was, the it was uh, we would have fallen <laughs> in love. I know. <laughs> we would have been in love. We'd be in yeah. a relationship now, yeah. I think. Yeah. And uh, I'll never see her again. That's no, how it is sometimes. It's a weird one, though, but it's nice to have those little moments that you can kind of like, ah, if I stayed with her, she probably would have got fat and hated me once she yeah, got yeah, to yeah. know me. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, th- it is ignorant for me to be like, oh, yeah. we would have fallen in love, but uh, we would definitely would have like dated or something, and, and it's funny that I had to go to Berlin to find some woman that likes Slavic fucking yeah. nightmare people, you know? Isn't it wild? Me. Yeah, because I know that that's, I think I'm just, I, this is, I don't think I'm the type in America. I think that the women here, they want to date men that look like Irish, r- retarded people. Yeah. And I'm not that. So I think in Berlin, it's some weird thing. <laughs> well, you're tall. Yeah. And you're white. Yeah. So right there, they're, they're in your American. Yeah. So you, you, there's a kind of a, a stature to that mm-hmm. that you don't have here. You're just another fucking Yankee and... Mm-hmm. There, yeah, there's there's tons Yankee. of skinny, tall white guys in America. So many. Yeah. So many. Yeah, you must have noticed that uh, sp- particular countries where everyone was about four inches shorter than you mm-hmm. on the average. Mm-hmm. You start, you know, that's why I love going to concerts in uh, in California because the genre of music I like is heavy, heavily favored by Latinos. So when I go and watch a black metal show, everyone's like four foot four. 
and I can see everything. But when you go to Sweden and watch a show, there's a girl, three girls in front of you that are six three. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, are That's scary. Viking. Yeah, it's it's sexy, scary. It's I, fun. Do you ever have a, a Viking woman grab you by the neck? And I had say, a, rip the front of your pants off. And I spit dated, in your mouth. I dated a no, not while I was over there, but I, I have <laughs> dated a, a Swedish girl while I was here. Well, her like her ancestor is Swedish. She was yeah. like a Texan, but like and. Uh, yeah, it was probably the most beautiful person I've ever been. It's wild. They're literally like perfect angels. Yeah. It's crazy. No blemish. No blemish. Completely Not even a bad clear. attitude. Just, I don't Fashionable. know. Fashionable. Be able to cook. Probably. Probably. <laughs> but you, um, she, was, she was like 20 years old, so she's probably perfect. still Perfect retarded. for you. Yeah. Yeah, a 20-year-old Swedish girl is like ivory. <laughs> yeah. Ivory, like the, the the fucking elephant, elephant? tusks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to come by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd imagine. Wow. Uh, <laughs> where can uh, where can people find you now? You're, uh, you're at the Sunset regularly. I'm on the uh, yeah yeah. I work at Sunset, and uh, it, you know, I I'd like to describe the Sunset as like kind of a it's a a place with a lot of good comics there that work there. Anyone that works there is you know a, in it a comic. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for nice comedy near the mothership, mm -hmm. yeah, go to the sunset. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram. I post reels occasionally. Yeah, I'm trying my best. Yeah, and that's what I do. I'm just a fucking comedian. Really working on just refining my self here right now. But I'd love to be an international fucking. That that would be my dream. That is my dream is to travel the world doing art. So I'm trying to figure that out. Well, let me know because with a simple Google search, you'll find out how eligible uh, eligible you yeah. are for this thing. Yeah, but yeah. I know you and oh god. Do you it, have a Scottish passport? No, but I have a um, UK passport. I had an ancestry visa, which was three and a half years. I lost my passport. With the visa in it, and I almost had a nervous breakdown. I refilled out the forms, had a photo of my visa, luckily, and I put a check in it for the same amount that I did last time. Mm -hmm. And I mailed it back to them with an apology letter. I lost my fucking passport. I'm sorry. I got blah, blah, blah. And they sent me a new passport back with a brand new visa in it starting from zero. Holy shit. So I got the extend on that. But you can apply for indefinite stay and then have America as your hobby and doing comedy for real in europe yeah yeah i was down they go oh, the food's nice and they got wi-fi i'm like that's great i do it on the roof and the forest is right up to the windows and all of a sudden poof, and then you see this water just come out of nowhere uh, from uh, oslo to bergen wow way north over the black metal church Dude, burners are. that's incredible mm. i would do that too i was thinking about when i was in europe uh I you do to, very well in England. I would. I think you do very well. With just well comedy -wise With just or? comedy. I mean, yeah. as far as audience res responses, yeah, yeah. I don't know what kind of financial return, but you would find your your yeah. thing, what you do, yeah, yeah. British people, Fuck yeah. they love it. They see your depression. They, <laughs> they see, see your misery, and they yeah. go, that's like us. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Ireland. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I think I'd do great over there, for sure, with like uh, being depressed. That's, that totally. seems like a very... They love it. They love it. They're like, God, my grandfather killed himself two years ago because he had the same posture as you. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, it's, it's enlightening when you see people that are just like... Uh, so like listen one of the best comedy clubs in the world is in scotland because mm -hmm. the weather sucks yeah what's uh, what's it called it's called the stand wow they have one in edinburgh right. edinburgh fuck edinburgh they're cursing me now i'd say edinburgh edinburgh, edinburgh. not I'm, edinburgh i'm scottish my ancestry is scottish i'd love to be there i'd love to visit glasgow glasgow one of my favorite places it is it's kind of like uh blah, blah, blah. It's great. I don't know. It's a beautiful city. But yeah, you, why? Uh, where are your grandparents? My grandparents are... So my uh, my dad's side was French and Scottish. And my grandma and uh, my other side was uh, Czech and uh, like Bohemian Slav. But you can get 
your ancestry visa and get your fucking Scottish passport. Really? Do you know that? No. Dude, that's what I did. <laughs> U.S. Scottish too? No, my English. My grandfather's from Grimsby near Manchester. What? Yeah, hold on a sec. We'll have a little moment here. Now, you know what you can do. So what could I do? What, you uh, got to get your long version birth certificates, which are very, very easy to acquire. For a couple hundred bucks, yeah, yeah. you get your long version birth certificate, which is literally a long birth certificate with all your info. And then who's Scottish? Your grandmother or our uh, grandfather? Gr grandmother. Grandmother. Okay. So yeah. now you get your grandmother's uh, thing. So it goes, uh, Grandma... Is it your mother's father or your mother? It was my dad's mother. Your dad's mother. So you get your dad's long version and yeah. you get your, your uh, grandmother's long version. Mm -hmm. And then you mail that in. And then within eight weeks, they send you back your passport with a fucking laminate in it. It says you're good for six years. Wow. And Sorry, three and a half. And how would that, uh, what, would, what does that unlock when you're... Uh, you can live and work anywhere in the United Kingdom. Holy shit. Yeah. You can go set up a bank account and all that stuff. What? Yeah. Holy shit. I'm going to do this no, after this. No, 100%. <laughs> and you're having the same reaction I did. My, my good friend, who's also Scottish, yeah, yeah. born in Canada, Craig Campbell. I, w I wouldn't have to throw away my U.S. passport. It no. just it's added to it's it? It's an ancestry visa. So at the end, what? six months before the visa expires, you can apply for definite stay. We would like to see most of the human race killed off because it is unworthy. It is unworthy of the gift of life. I don't care what society thinks. They're nothing anyway. They're no better than me. Until we have a safe word, we will not stop. Have you ever thought what it would be like to see a person's head amputated? Think of things so horrible that the human mind cannot imagine them. See all this and more when you see on stage in person that crazy mixed up. I like being set apart from people. I like to be hated. Safe word with Jason. Hurt.